So we're still stripping the old XW down. Um, front suspension's still in, both guards are off, um, or both panels on the, the left hand right hand side. Um, this area here, cell area, is still looking really, really good, which I'm pleased about, as well as underneath the screen over there. Uh, this is a very religious area underneath the battery tray because normally when you take the battery tray out you say, oh god, or something like that. That's all good, nice and solid, so I'm pleased with that too. Steering column's out. Also all the dash and wiring looms been taken out. We've just got the dash frame left there. Just got to clean up a bit more. At the moment I'm taking out the back windscreen. I've decided to cut the seal out. There are a couple of uh, minor rust issues in here. In fact, that's gone through there. So that's all going to have to be cleaned off and, uh, and re-welded. So... Pressing on. All right, so the back window's out now. Uh, not great news. A bit of uh, bit of rust there. Um, hole around the other side, so it's going to have to be cut out and uh, and re welded. So at th th this stage, uh, at this stage, the um, the ugly bits are sort of in here. Just a tiny bit there. That's not too bad, but it's a bit scaly, and we'll, we'll probably need to cut that out anyway. Um, around there, and also the front floors. So. Um, the rear ones at this stage don't look too bad. I might get away without changing the rear ones. Um, but the rest of it looks pretty good. Alright, so I'm taking the headlining out now. Um, normally I wouldn't take a headlining out, but because the whole thing needs to be painted inside after it's had its work done, um, and also it's a little bit mouldy, I've decided to rip it out. Pull that listing away. Ford, um, give it the choice of when you fit these headlinings, which holes to use. They're, they're forward mounted. I'm just going to mark where the headlining bows come out and number the bows. It's likely they're going to be slightly different lengths from each other. The other thing these cars have is they have this fiberglass insulation. And this stuff, you have to use gloves with it because it actually um, sort of penetrates your skin and makes it sore. Oh, look at this. Uh oh. It's got. Oh, shit. It's got rats up there, hasn't it? I hope it's not bloody rats, but how the hell... Ugh. How the hell would they get up there? That's rats. Well, that looks pretty good. <laughs> looks better than this. I think there's been rats in the roof of this, Rosie. You know it's rats when they take lolly wrappers. Nice car. That's what I mean though, the more you dig, the more you find. Gets to the point where you say to yourself, why do I bother doing this? Ugh. So like a smooth edge type stuff at the front. Ford have colour coded the headlining bows. I'm just going to label them 1F for front, 2, 3, 4 toward the back. So now when it's time to Time to put it back together. I know where they go. Now I've often wondered why the roof on this car is in such terrible repair in terms of surface rust. It hasn't gone through, it's still pretty good. Um, but it hasn't been prepared properly, it hasn't been painted or prepared properly. Um, where the rest of the car, the paint's pretty rubbish but it hasn't done this. The top of the boot lid didn't do that and the original bonnet before I bought the car didn't do that either. It really is something quite, uh, quite strange. Now, on the underside, I reckon, I could be wrong, I reckon this has had a new turret, new roof skin put onto it. There's no consistency in terms of colour from the factory where the car was painted, uh, but not just that, it's my opinion that it's had an accident. Um, now there's no damage on the pillars, on the side of the car, nothing. But this has been creased um, and straightened out and also it's freshly welded there and there. Now that looks to me like a tree or something has fallen on it. If you compare that to the other side, that's original. We look here, that's anything but. So, new roof skin, or turret if you like, and some welding there. They're probably, well, the, the, the A pillar's nice and straight, that hasn't been meddled with, but I would think from this something's fallen, something very heavy has fallen on the roof. Uh, this is what you get when you pull them apart, you find out bits and pieces of the car's history. Now pulling windscreens out of these isn't hard, particularly the back one. Um, it's just a rubber seal, you can cut that and take it out. And we've already spoken about this back window. The front one was absolutely terrible to get out, but the lip looks pretty good. It looks fairly good there. Have found a bit of rust down here. Now that wasn't immediately obvious. There was like a, a skin of filler sort of stuff on, like there. Um, and I 
sort of dug around and found this, so that I'll have to have a new plate put in here and weld it in. Um, the rest of it looks fairly good. There's a bit of a bit of activity there, but the rest of it's really, really clean. It's good. Um, now to get this out, this was glued in with urethane, and um, that stuff is damn near impossible to get out. You can't kick them out. Um, so I've ended up using this spatula, which I bought 25 years ago to scrape dirty mortar off old bricks and sharpen the edge to a razor point with a file. And I was able to sort of slice along. It took me a while, it took me a few goes, but eventually got the window out. The fuel tanks had a bit of a hiding in this area. Quite a large dent there. These tanks are about $600 or so, and you can get the 36 gallon one. There is a bit of a sweat here though, coming from the centre unit. Um, now I'm going to take the tank out. It's leaking from this gasket. Uh, there's no other damage I can see in this area, but sort of when you rub it and smell it, it does smell a bit petrolly. So we'll take that out, but aside from that underneath here, it looks really, really good. It's actually excellent. It's much nicer under here than it is anywhere else. Well, she said she wanted a new dog, and apparently we got one. Where's the dog? Jealousy. Here, come on. Where are you? Oh, there she is. Hold up. How are you? <laughs> Bought a few things for the XW, brand new fuel tank in there, it's a standard 16 gallon. Um, this is a tremendous kit, it's only $475, comes with a sender in it, um, so that's all sealed up and, and looking good. And also this fitting kit, which is new new bolts and the um, filling neck gasket and the, the also the pipe to go to the um, to join the fuel tank to the filler tube. So, absolutely brilliant value, very happy with that. What do you think Rosie? Pretty good? I've also uh, bought another bonnet. This one hasn't been drilled or anything like that. It's pretty rust free. It's in good nick. Uh, this is the original one that came with the car. Well, the original one was actually taken off. This is one that came with the car, was supplied with the car. And it's got all your sort of bonnet pin holes. And they haven't been done terribly well. And there's also all these holes down here for a GT type scoop, which isn't the look I'm looking for. So I've got this other bonnet here. So I've got to get rid of this one now. I'm going to evacuate these brakes now so that we can take the lines off without fluid going everywhere. I'm just using a, a pneumatic bleeder to, to do that. What we do is just use compressed air and draw out all the fluid. That is disgusting in there. Look at that. So we're going to change everything, all the lines, new master cylinder, everything. Because that's just not good enough. This is not about you, Herbie Dog. Hmm? It's not about you. No, it's not about you. Okay, what's left to do now? Well, I'm going to take these engine pedestals out. I'll take the spray bar out as well, that way I can clean up. I'll send it out with the steering box in so it can be sort of steered from the front by the wheels. Um, and then when I get it back, I'll take all that out. Um, interior is pretty much apart. I've got to take these pieces off. There's a, a rusty screw there and there's one around the other side. Then I can take the whole um, rear loom of the car out. The dash is all stripped as much as I want to strip it. Well, as much as it can be stripped really. It's pretty pretty bare bones. Uh, so I'll scrub the floors a bit more just to see what exactly what I've got. Hopefully there's no holes in the rear floors and they're alright. I can just get some new ones for the front. Um, got to take the fuel tank out. Uh, there's the rear wiring loom. It's had a tow bar on it. It's not going to get another one of those, so that can all get chopped out. And I can sort all the wiring out. I want to have every skerrick of wiring out of here, uh, and the tank as well. Well, this is how you're going to roll <clears throat> if you're going to do two cars up at the same time. I've got crap absolutely everywhere. The other thing I'm not too wrapped about is the rear axle ratio in this car. There was a little bit of noise coming from one of the bearings, but the insides look absolutely brilliant. Uh, it's very difficult to find these axles. There have been a whole lot of them available because people have pulled them out and put 9 inch rear ends in. But a lot of the 6s had 325s and 35 gearing and that's not what I want for a V8. I want about 292. And I picked this one up here for 90 bucks. And the insides look absolutely brilliant. I'll take the cover off again. I'm swapping the back plate over with the original car because the back plate's in better nick on this. So I'm just going to pop this cover off. Now these rear axles, as I said, there's probably a few years ago a glut of them around but the problem now is they're difficult to find particularly in a 292 ratio this is an original V8XY one and then narrower the next A through to XD the XZ of course had the watch link and the coil mounts and all that sort of stuff so they're no good but I didn't want a wider track at the back and narrow at the front so I didn't want to um, encourage understeer which I'm not sure if that would be the case but it just seems that that would um, 
bare natural effect of it. So I'm going to take this off. I've already had it off earlier today, but then I decided to um, change the cover over. And it looks mad in there. It looks really, really good. A bit dirty. This cover, I put this one on. It's a bit dirty on the outside, but it's clean on the inside, which is where it counts. And that'll just pop straight over. I'll just clean up these bits of gasket. And I'm in business. Now it's quite easy working out the axle ratio of these. You can count the number of pinion teeth and divide it into the number of crown wheel teeth. But some of these have um, have it stamped on the. If you can see where I marked it, but there it is. There. It's actually marked. This is 2.93 to one. It works out at 2928 or something. So it's also a good idea just to check the meshing of the teeth, make sure there's nothing cracked in there or at least nothing chipped. Um, this is a closed sort of carrier, so I can't see the bevel gears, which is a bit disconcerting, but it all looks pretty good, you know, certainly for $90 and it's the right width and so forth. It seems to be a bit of a bargain. When we're cleaning this up, a bit of scotch brite, I've just used a razor blade there. I'm going to go over it with scotch brite, not wet and dry. I always clean gasket surfaces with wet and dry. But if any of that carborundum sort of grit gets in there, it's going to play havoc. We need to keep that clean. I want to pop the cover on as soon as I can. And there it is ready for storage. This will do fine. This is a Borg Warner out of a 302 XY. Not going to bother with the 9 inch. Most people put 9 inches in these cars. They're great for big blocks with fat tyres and lots and lots of torque or modified small blocks. But on a car like this, it's absolute overkill. I do a little bit of cleaning up and the, the way you would do it normally is is you would use these types of wire brushes. These are drill attachment types, they're quite prickly. The trouble with these things is they tend to lie down, so you find yourself having to reverse the drill all the time. I've got my front angle grinder here. This is a twisted stainless steel one. It was quite expensive at 35 bucks, but it seems to be a lot more aggressive. The only problem with this is you need to hang on with both hands, because uh, this is a really, really dangerous uh, tool. I thought these were stress fractures in the metal, but it's actually been hit here and they've filled it and they're just cracks in the bog. So I've got to take all that out and I might be able to straighten it a bit more. The other thing that's crazy about this is it looks like they've veed that out. They've cut it out and filled it with weld to keep that straight, but it's not supposed to be straight. It sort of falls away. That looks wrong compared to that. So I'm going to have to mess around with this. Really, I should probably put a new radiator support panel on, but... This one still has its proper original number there, which I don't really care about numbers much, but it is. It does sort of attribute to its originality a bit. Well, this car certainly wasn't the condition I hoped it was when I bought it. I've had to cut this sort of thing out, and it's absolutely bad. It's a matter of making patches that fit properly for here, and I've drilled these so that I can... Um, I've got a great friend who's a great welder that's supposed to be flush in there I'm just making them out of metal obviously and I've drilled them so they can be plug welded and once that's all ground back and everything it'll look really good and I've made another one for here it's probably going to be difficult to see past this clamp but that sort of fits that sort of fits in there anyway so what sort of starts is that that all has to be cut out again and all up here have to put a patch there and we have to make it nice and neat like that so there's good metal underneath the, the filler. There will be a little bit of filler over it just to smooth it out. You can see this floor is a little bit had it. Um, I've ground along here so I can see the spot welds. I'm going to have to take or we'll drill these spot welds out um, but first I'm just going to vacuum all this sort of muck off so that when I put the new floor in it'll sit as low as I can get it so I can sort of mark up where the edges are. Now for drilling spot welds, we'd use a spot weld drill. This is actually a spot weld cutter. You can undo this part and turn it around to get the... It's got another sharp in there. This is mainly for um, salvaging the part that you're drilling through. Um, so this is useless for what I want. I needed the drill, which is like a milling bit with a small point at the end. Uh, I'm just going to drill them out. It's a bit dangerous doing that because you can um, drill through sort of both layers. So I've got to be very careful when I do it. We've got the 
new floor is just sort of sitting over the old one so I can mark out where it is. You can see the old newspaper. We've used tar and newspaper. There's also some rust issues here. I'm going to have to plate that as well. I'm just going to use a bit of this. So I can see roughly where it is around the outside. And where I can sort of where I can see roughly where it's going to be. Through. I'm just sort of drilling small six mil holes, just little divots. Not much of the car left now. Rear floors are alright, we can repair those, the front ones are out. Sills look beautiful on this car. You can see down there, I've ground out all those marks left in the spot welds. I've got to stick a patch there, which is disconcerting, and there's also one around the other side, a little bit smaller. But that's it for the inside until, uh, until my good friend the welder comes around. Another job I can do is to, to put six mil holes every sort of inch or so apart, inch and a half apart, all around the floors um, so they can be plug welded in. Until we see exactly how it can fit the final trim on the floor pan, can't be done yet, so this will obviously be a bit tidier, but it was roughly cut out so I could drop the floors in and see how they were sitting. This all looked clean, particularly there, and I found it's got a dirty great hole there, and it's also gone through both layers there. There's two layers here, um, so obviously to fix this I'm going to have to sort of cut straight down and make up a piece for here, I'll cut two pieces for there. Um, I'm going to have to make up a new uh, lip for the windshield there and, and bring it into here. I don't know how we're going to do this because it's been brazed and you can't mig on top of that. Um, drill out the sides here so we can put the ledge in. The other side was similar. Um, didn't go as far, it was a bit there. I might be able to fill that in, I'm not sure. Um, and it's necessary to make a few pieces, that's the top of the side, it's a sill down there so I've just had to sort of make a piece there and that can be welded in around there I think the best way to get to that is from the inside of the car and then we've sort of got these bits here now there's holes down here so it can be plug welded and we can put that in and obviously you put your, your sealer on top and then this one sort of goes in like that um, and that's all got to be sort of tacked in and belted into shape and line welded around there, seam welded around there and then we can put some seal on top check this out, this is what happens when you don't wear the right safety gear I don't know if you can see that see all those holes? they're my shorts <laughs> angle grinding and cutting metal without the proper equipment not that I'm standing behind the camera with no pants on so that's it for this video. I'm on holiday at the moment, so hopefully within the next fortnight I'll have all the metalwork finished and then I can start on uh, preparing the body for paint. See you later.